What's going on, friend? In this episode, we're going to be taking a quick look to these two Gibson announcements. I'm already lancing now. We break it down, baby. Alright, thank you so much for being here once again. And remember, as usual, like, subscribe, and do all those cool little things that we like to do on YouTube so that you and I can stay in touch with each other. Anyway, like we like to do in this channel, we're going to be taking a quick look to the brand new Gibson announcements. I got an email today, and it was, of course, an Obtanium. <laughs> I haven't checked the price, and I have no clue how much it's going to be. But you know when Gibson says that it's something like Murphy Lab Collector's Edition limited to only 50 guitars. You know there's going to be a hefty price tag. So as usual, I thought let's check these out together. And there's also another announcement for a guitar that's actually a little bit more like budget. And look at that. Budget. Because I don't know if we can call this budget anymore, but let's move on. Let's go to the Gibson.com website. <laughs> Boom. There you go. First things first. The Adam Jones Flying V Collector's Edition, a limited edition Flying V that's out of this, this world. Okay. <laughs> super dramatic. I love it. Oh, wow. 20 grand. Okay. So not super, super collector's edition like the Greeny that they did like $50,000 for the experience and this and that. But let's move on. Let's just check some pictures. Okay. Definitely. The headstock is great. I love that big Gibson logo. It's just so fitting for a guitar like this, right? And the huge inlays. Like, I mean, in those frets, it's more inlay than wood. I love it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Love it, love it, love it, love it. The burst, I mean, it's hit or miss. And don't crucify me, you know what I mean? It's just like, I'm not particularly a, like, a big fan of like a silver burst. I'm not like a particularly big fan of a silver burst. Even though I really like them. And I remember probably one of the first guitars that I ever was shocked by. It was like a Gibson Les Paul, Adam Jones edition with that burst. It was really nice. Hey, that's awesome. Ooh, I love how they faded the back and it looks like so vintage. Like, look how sloppy it is right here. <laughs> I mean, and when I say sloppy, it's just distressed, you know, it's old. But it looks great. I love the aesthetics of this. With this beautiful medallion over there, strings through, like that. Well, I feel like the tilt is not as pronounced as I remember being in the flying Vs, but who knows? And then the combination of pickups that he uses, most likely, speed knobs, the selector. All right, let's check what this is. Adam Jones, we know who he is. And if you don't know, go figure it out because they are going to blow your mind. I remember like being like probably 13 or 14 years old when I first started listening to Tool, like paying attention to Tool. I remember like hearing a few songs here and there, but not paying attention. But the day I really started paying attention, <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Adam Jones, blah, 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 out of this world. Let's go straight up and check what do we have here. Top, oh, mahogany top, IMB, non way relief, which is going to be heavy. <laughs> Seven ply top binding. Oh, nice. It's like a custom. Okay, let me see if I can make the zoom so I can see it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't even notice that because I make the zoom for you guys, but there's no zoom for me, right? <laughs> But wow, this is really nice. I love that they have that custom binding over there. Really nice. Okay, what else do we have? Mahogany and then the Murphy Lab Age Nitrocellulose Lacquer. So that means that it's going to age pretty quickly. <laughs> I saw a video with Tom Murphy talking about the paint and he was referring to it as like, he used to paint guitars like it, they were brand new and then he would distress them and make them look old. He says that now he just applies an old finish. And I mean... Maybe. He's the best at his job, right? <laughs> so maybe. But definitely looks great. I see all the cracking. I am not complaining. And I'm not buying it either. <laughs> Let me know if any of you are in this kind of price bracket. I mean, I know it's easy to say it on the internet, so I'm going to take it with a grain of salt. But I wonder how many people actually can buy a guitar like at this price in my audience. Okay, let's see what's up in the neck. Okay, a bunch of measurements that I don't know about. But definitely, we have the bone nut, we have the ebony fingerboard, 22 frets, and we have the mother of pearl. I like that they're mother of pearl, then hardware, lightly aged chrome, shallower tuning machines. So they're not using regular Gibsons, huh? I know that in the Adam Jones, they use the shallers. So yeah, I guess I think I see an S there. Okay, cool. Then, ooh, tail pieces through body, blah, 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 blah. All this is like pretty much normal, I guess. 
except this. The trust rut cover with the dog days artwork. I want to see that. Oh, that's nice. So what's the lesson today? Read, because <laughs> I would have missed that. What else do we have here? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Let's see the electronics. We have the Seymour Duncan in the bridge and the custom bucker in the neck. Is it, is it that way in his guitar? I think so, right? I know you'll correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, I think overall a pretty nice offering. Really nice. Probably what this means is that there's going to be a little bit of like a more attainable version for like a broader audience. Because <laughs> I don't want to say cheaper because at these prices, there's nothing cheaper anymore. Okay, so let's move on. And let's try to find the Kirk Hammett guitar. Epiphone presents Kirk Hammett, Greeny, 1959, Les Paul Standard. Three legendary guitarists, one legendary guitar. Let's check this out. Nice. I love this picture of Kirk. He just looks so happy now, right? I feel like he's not troubled. He's not bothered by anything. And he's just got like this sand vibe to himself now. Good for him. Good for him. I'm glad that he's feeling good. He looks like he's feeling good. We don't know. All right, so let's go. See what happens here. Epiphone Kirk Hammett. Wow. 1500 bucks. There you go. That's what we were talking about. No more budget guitars. Wow, 1500 Well, I guess like that's in line with like most Epiphones now. I'm like, wow, super shocked that it's very hard to find guitars under $1,000 anymore. At least from like the big brands, right? But it's starting to get even deeper here. Wow. Okay, let's check this one out. Can I open a different page? Let's see. Okay, let's check this one out. Ooh, wow, the Epiphone website is so different. <laughs> but whatever, that's not here nor there. Let's go check this greeny Epiphone. Okay, first thing that we're gonna see is boing, the headstock. Friends, Epiphone now has a Gibson headstock. Even with the mother of pearl inlay and everything. And of course, since it's a veneer, it's gonna be pretty much like great flame all the time. This is pretty, it's looking pretty good. There's nothing to complain about the looks in that guitar. I mean, you can be a brand snob and like hate on the fact that it says Epiphone. <laughs> but what can you do? This is how it is. All right, that's very nice. Looks just like the real deal. Nothing, nothing, nothing to complain about. And let's see what happens here. Yeah, it looks phenomenal. I mean, I can't wait to see the reviews of them, but looks great. Looks phenomenal. Boom. The headstock. There it is. It looks like every bit as good as like the studio or the tributes. So that's really, really nice. Wait. Wow. It comes with a nice hard case. Beautiful. And it's like a historic one. Okay. So this is pretty much a 1959. And how much is there a 1959? Let's go check really quick. A 1959. And wow. Their 1959, it's a thousand bucks. And this one, let's see. The pickups are Gibsons. And I've heard about this, that they come with actual Gibson pickups. Like Gibson USA pickups, right? So, okay, for a thousand bucks, you could get the Epiphone 1959. Or for 1500, you get the Greenie. And let's see, does it come with a hard case? Let's see around here. Okay, hard shell case included. Doesn't say which one, but. Nice. Okay, so you can get an Epiphone for a thousand. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought they were all more expensive. Okay, so because I think these are pretty much the same thing. And now let's see the pickups in this guy. Gibson USA Greeny Bucker. Okay, and the so basically these are the actual Gibson USA pickups. And how much are those? I don't think are those five hundred bucks. Let's see, because this might be a deal actually. Okay, so the greeny buckers are 300 bucks. Okay, so basically it would be $1,000 for the 1959 Epiphone. $200, let's call it for the headstock or the Kirk Hammett Association. And then $300 for the pickups. Not too bad if you put it that way. What do you think? Are you liking this? I feel like sort of like the thing I like the most, which has been the biggest gripe that I've had with the Epiphones, is that headstock. I used, like, definitely, like, I really think this headstock is ugly for my taste. You know, just like when you don't like a condiment or something, I don't like that headstock. 
It's so ugly. A few times I came like really close to buy an Epiphone just because I really want to try them, you know, just to see what they are because I don't want to be like talking smack on a guitar brand that I don't even know about. But that headstock totally kept me out of the loop. And like Heritage Guitars, like the same thing. I'm sorry, but since I fund my whole channel and like all these video edits and my thumbnails and I do everything by myself and I don't have like unlimited budget to just buy any guitar that I want. So it has to be something that I would like to have. So every guitar that I have right here is a guitar that I would like to have. And then, of course, if I don't like it, I send it back. But if I like it, great, right? So in this case, I've never gotten an Epiphone for this reason. I really don't like that headstock. Let me know what you think in the comment section. So I would say maybe that now that they have this one, my gripes are gone. Because I don't really care if it says Epiphone or Gibson. I'm, I'm a studio guy, you know what I mean? I'm not showing off my guitars. If it sounds great and it feels great, that's all I really care about. If it says Epiphone or Gibson, I don't care. But this headstock... It's looking pretty good. Every bit as good as a Gibson. Really nice. And if it comes with great pickups, I can't wait to hear about the setup because I know that the Plex service that they're doing in the Gibsons, it's what's like, I think, paying off for like most players because I feel like a lot of the problems they used to have are gone. Not all of them, but a lot of them are gone. And if they are doing the same thing to these guitars, that would be pretty great. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Are you excited about this Epiphone guitar? Are you excited about the Adam Jones? Are you in the market for one of these? Would you like to wait until they have like a maybe like an American Standard or even an Epiphone? Because you know they're coming. They have to be coming. Right? All right. But before I keep talking too much, remember, like if you like this video, definitely subscribe. Stay warm. Stay safe. Go to the comment section down below and let me know what you think. Other than that, I'm out, my friend. Thank you for being here again. Peace.